I'm here to talk to you tonight about the great passion of my life, which is exploring the unknown. For as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by the unexplained and the mysterious and the weird. And that led me to a lot of interesting pursuits. When I was a kid, I would go to the library and check out stacks of books about stuff like the deep ocean, outer space, ancient civilizations, and mysterious creatures like the Loch Ness Monster. For me, all of these things were fascinating, but for a long time, I didn't understand the unifying factor, which is that all of these things are great unknowns. They're frontiers that haven't really been mapped, where anyone could go and make a new discovery. The unifying factor is that the truth is hidden. It's waiting to be discovered. And that, to me, has always been a spur to go out into the darkness, into the unknown, and look for things that no one's ever found before. In Joseph Conrad's story, Heart of Darkness, the character Marlowe talks about mysterious life in the wilderness and also in the hearts of men. And there's a very important concept there, which is that darkness, mysteriousness, is not just something that exists outside in the world, it's something that exists inside each one of us. And to be honest, the most mysterious place in the world is locked away in the darkness of each of our skulls. It's an organ that exists to process information, not to pump blood or to digest food, but to render electronic patterns that create this phenomenon called consciousness that we don't even understand exactly what it is. As far as we know, it's unique in the entire universe. The only thing remotely comparable to it might be a fire. A fire isn't the thing that burns, it's the process of burning. And consciousness is a similar phenomenon. It's not a physical object. It's a process of continually burning through subjective experience. And that makes it fascinating to me. So what I want to tell you today is a story about how I fell in love with the brain from a point in my life when I was feeling very bored. I always had this hunger to go out and explore mysterious places, but that's not something that it's always practical to do. In our lives, we are in jobs that keep us away from adventure and mitigate risk, box it up, put it away where we don't have to see it. And a lot of the time, that's probably a good thing. But still, there's this hunger, and I experience it, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced it, to find something new, to discover something that no one's ever seen before. And this drove me to keep searching for new ways that I could explore unknowns, frontiers that no one had really mapped yet. But still, I was feeling frustrated because all of these frontiers seemed to be distant places, ruins on other continents, the deep sea, outer space, things that I didn't really have access to. But all that changed for me one night when I watched a TED talk by an MIT neuroscientist named Sebastian Sung. And this TED talk was called, I Am My Connectome. And in this talk, Sebastian Sung laid out a concept that blew my mind. He was working on a simulation of a human brain, reconstructing it neuron by neuron inside a computer. Just as the human genome contains all the information necessary to build a human body, the human connectome would contain all the information necessary to build a human mind, a human consciousness. Something just detonated in my brain when I heard this. And I said, people need to know about this. This is something that will transform everything about the way that we interact with the world. Taking the internal contents of our mind and making them a digital simulation that we can interact with. Taking the internal and making it external. So I started researching. I just dove in and started learning everything I could. One of the first things I discovered is that this new field, connectomics, has led to the creation of some beautiful art. That 
is inside of your brain. These types of connections exhibit a complexity like nothing else on Earth. This represents the connections inside your cerebral cortex. They're interwoven grids. They're not just random. They're a delicate lattice pattern, and each layer of the lattice is dedicated to dealing with a certain aspect of information. And then I discovered really cool things, like this video, which, when it plays, you'll get to see. That is reality. That this is a video by a neuroscientist reality. named Henry Markram. That reality, you see this is that. one slice, one tiny cross-section of a cerebral cortex. Those waves of activity, those are happening millions of times all across your brain right now. We don't know what those signals encode. They're a mysterious language in which the brain talks to itself. And I realized I had found the dark continent I was looking for. And it was right inside of me, inside of each of us. And so I began to research more things. And I started taking all this knowledge that I found and just dumping it onto this blog, which I called The Connectome. I was learning all this fascinating stuff, like about circuits in the brain that actually redirect attention. You remember what Robert was talking about, how when you're anxious, your brain can't focus on numbers? Well, the reverse is true. If you're feeling anxious and you focus your energy on doing mental arithmetic, your brain literally cannot physically process the anxiety. It cannot do both at once. I thought this was an incredibly powerful concept, and so I, was, I, I kept looking for more. I discovered the fact that when you're feeling depressed, if you focus on visual information that you can see, instead of on your own thought process, you can actually unlock your brain from a depressive cycle of thinking. These are things that have been proven true in clinical studies, and I've tried them, and they work. And I just kept dumping all this information onto this blog, but it wasn't enough. I wanted to see what was going on in there for myself. I had to actually go and visit this dark continent that I was reading about. So I started talking to my friends who were into technology, and I asked how much would it cost me to build my own brainwave scanner at home? And I quickly found out about this, the emotive neuro headset, 400 bucks, you can bring this thing home and immediately watch your own brain activity unfold on your computer screen. I remember the first night that I brought this thing home, and I sat there in the dark, watching my brainwave activity change in response to me deciding to say things like, I'm meditating, or I believe this, or I'm thinking about this. And I realized that what I was looking at was something totally alien to me that was going on inside my own head, a form of communication that was encoding information I couldn't understand that was underlying all of my conscious mental properties. And I had this eerie sensation that my consciousness was really just a spotlight casting about in the darkness of this vast ecosystem that was completely beyond my control or understanding. And it was a very humbling feeling, but also a sense of awe that this was here all the time to be explored, and I'd never explored it before. And the thing is, now we're getting to the point where this technology is making available to each of us types of artistic expression that most humans throughout history would never have even dreamed possible. This is an image of a waterfall that was created. The color patterns on that waterfall shift in response to a person's brain waves who's wearing a headset. This is a direct physical manifestation of a person's brain activity. And then there's even weirder stuff. This video is from a computer program that can actually render video by scanning the visual parts of a person's brain. We're taking things that are internal, subjective reality within the brain and creating physical manifestations of it that we can see and interface and share with each other. This technique is kind of crude right now, but it's getting better. Our children are going to grow up in a world where they can record their dreams and play them back for each other. This is a reality that we're all going to have to confront. It's a strange new way of dealing with 
what we've long considered internal mental phenomena. But they're about to become external. And that's going to radically change not only the way that we deal with each other, but the way that we deal with physical reality itself. Because the boundary between external physical reality and the internal subjective reality of our brains is being broken down. And eventually, that boundary will no longer exist. And the external world will be filled with direct representations of our internal subjective experiences. It's a little scary, but it's also incredibly exciting because it means that there's a whole new world to explore that we're all going to be able to take part in. This is not something that you have to go on an expedition to find. This is technology that's rapidly becoming available for all of us. And of course, the Connectome project continues. This is a rendering of what a completed map of a human Connectome might look like. This is the thing that we're hunting. This is what we're going into the dark to find. And when we find it, we're going to understand what human consciousness really is. And that, I think, is going to be the most transformative revelation of all. It's a strange place, the inside of our brains. It's a place that we're intimately familiar with, and yet we understand so little of what's going on in the shadows. There's danger in this exploration. There are things that are going to be scary. There are things that are going to be challenging to the way that we're used to dealing with reality. But to me, that makes it all the more exciting. That makes it an adventure. That makes it something that I think anyone with a sense of adventure should want to embark on. There's darkness inside each of our skulls, and that's a darkness that we need to explore. So I say, let's go right into the heart of it. Let's go into the dark. That's where you can find me. <laughs>